USA. It's 7 a.m. You're doom scrolling in bed before getting up to start the day. Suddenly, your video stopped, no more internet, and it's not your Wi Fi acting up. It's something stranger. The bridge between the United States and the rest of the world just fell. So, what if the USA, one of the world's largest economies and the number one military power, were cut off from the global internet? How would the rest of the world react? This is just a what if scenario I came up with at 2 a.m., so I might miss some points and it won't be a perfect case. That being said, let's find out. In the very first minute without the internet, nothing would seem unusual. People would glance at their phones, computers, or TVs flash an error. Most would simply assume the connection loss was due to their internet provider. But after a few more minutes, people start to get annoyed. Some ask their neighbors or passersby if they're also without internet. Soon enough, more and more people realize it's not just a local issue. It might be something much bigger. Internet giants like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, Apple, or NVIDIA quickly sense that something is wrong. Still, they wait, expecting their backup servers to come online. Since most smartphone networks depend on the internet to manage connections, and with satellites in the USA also unavailable, even phone calls don't go through. People are really starting to panic. Something is clearly wrong. With no social media and no TV to explain what's happening, many begin digging through old belongings, hoping to find a radio. AM and FM sets still work, since they rely on radio waves. Soon, an emergency bulletin cuts through the static. Nationwide alert. No internet, mobile, or satellite in the U.S. Use AM, FM for updates. 911 via landline. With the entire internet down and backups failing to come online, the government and military snap into crisis mode. They search for solutions. The president is moved to a secure facility as teams work to determine the cause of the collapse. Transport services are also impacted. Most flights are canceled or delayed. Aircraft are brought in to land. Train schedules are completely disrupted, and some services have even come to a halt. Some autonomous vehicles have crashed as their GPS systems are no longer working. Deposits, credit card payments, and cryptocurrency transactions don't work either. People will need cash to pay for anything. Every available hand in law enforcement, fire services, EMS, and hospitals is mobilized to manage the fallout. And this isn't just America's headache. The U.S. is the home base for a huge slice of the world's internet. Clouds, payments, ad networks, content delivery, developer tools. When the hub stops, the spokes slow. Around the world, markets open to static and guesswork. Some trades wait on U.S. data that never arrives. Markets and USD liquidity wobble. Non-U.S. markets trade, but with thinner dollar liquidity and wider spreads. Cards issued by U.S. banks won't authorize abroad. Foreign cards at U.S. merchants are declined. The largest banks by market cap are heavily affected by this situation. J.P. Morgan Chase, $828.82 billion, and Bank of America, $375.82 billion. Multinationals and major software companies are hit by the chaos as well. Their subsidiaries worldwide can't reach their U.S.-based headquarters. In the cloud and dev tools sector, we have companies like Microsoft and Cloudflare. In commerce and logistics, we have Amazon, Shopify, and UPS. In ad tech, media, and gaming, we have Google Ads, YouTube, Netflix, and Twitch. In enterprise SaaS, we have Oracle NetSuite and Salesforce. These are just examples of the biggest companies, but the list goes on and on. Overall, the global economy would change drastically if the United States were cut off from the rest of the world. Now let's go back to our isolated country. After a few hours, many people are already home as workplaces and businesses shut down without internet. But no one is calm. The beeping of the emergency broadcast system fills the airwaves. As panic spreads nationwide, law and order breaks down. People start looting and ransacking shops and businesses, panic buying food and water from every store at once with the remaining cash they have. Just like during the COVID era, there's a stampede for toilet paper. With ATMs and banks offline, fights break out at stores and on the streets. Law enforcement is mobilized. Many people begin isolating themselves at home, as if it were the purge. Amid the chaos, hospitals brace for the worst. The lucky few with old TVs and antennas can still pick up broadcasts, 
watching the president and government telling everyone to calm down. Internet providers now realize they're in serious trouble. They contact other locations by radio and on emergency phone lines that don't rely on the internet. Soon it's clear, servers across the United States are down. Companies grasp the seriousness as IT teams fail again and again to bring systems back online. They urgently back up company information. Technicians run around with hard drives and USB sticks, trying to save any data they can. Banks realize there's no point staying open. They lock the vaults, but not before some branches are overrun by panicked crowds trying to pull out their money before it's gone. Sirens can be heard everywhere as police and firefighters try to maintain order. Scientists, engineers, and programmers are working tirelessly to bring it back online. The government has been trying to contact its allies, but with limited success. Every branch of the military is on high alert. Troops have been deployed to border regions, ready to defend if an all-out war breaks out. It really seems like it's the end for Americans. The internet is a huge part of people's lives. They can access everything they want through it. Now that it's gone, no one really knows what to do. Without phones or the internet, people experience withdrawal, like coming off an addictive drug. They can't reach friends or family, and access to news and information is very limited. But some people think maybe it's not so bad. You can fix your dopamine addiction and your doom-scrolling problem. Now you can actually touch some grass. At this point, almost everyone knows the internet is down. Using old radio broadcast towers, rural areas have received word about what's happening. People try to find multiple ways to pass the time. Some play board games, others just read books. Older people are much more comfortable with this, remembering when they had no internet. Some persist in switching their devices on and off, hoping it will come back magically. The internet going down in the US creates a chain of terrible events that leads to mass panic. In this hypothetical scenario, things could go very wrong very quickly. Still, it's an extreme case. An entire country losing internet is unlikely. We've seen big parts go down before, just not an entire country. For example, in March 2024, multiple undersea cables were cut, knocking regions across West and Southern Africa offline. So, a total US internet blackout is extremely unlikely because there's no single off switch. The network is made of thousands of independent providers with many fiber routes, undersea cables, and big exchange points that can reroute traffic. But if it ever did happen, now you know how bad it could get.